Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you how to use batting for soft sculpture. You're probably used to, or, well a lot of you will use batting, but a lot of you will be used to just using the um, the wool tops, sometimes, or roving people call them, with a slight difference, but um, with batting, it used for soft sculpture and I also use it for my my own pumpkins. You can see they're quite squidgy and squishy and it requires a lot less felting. So I thought it would be really nice to have a quick tutorial on that today. So again, this is what you're probably used to, this nice straight combed roving or, or wool top or whatever you're used to calling it. Whereas the batting, it's just a different process. So this is taken off the carder and all the wool is in different directions. You can see, you can just pull it apart really gently, it becomes see-through and do a lot with it but today I'm going to show you how I have made my pumpkins with it and also I'm going to show you how to just use it to wrap around wire armatures which is another common use for it. So as you can see here I've got these lovely pumpkins and they're all squidgy and soft and they take so um, little felting that I thought I would just show you quickly how to make them. Now, the difference with these and um, the roving is, you know, with the roving you would normally roll it up, shape it, do it this way. When you're making larger pieces, especially if you're making something like a full-size pumpkin like this, it's going to turn out quite expensive to use your, um, your actual batting for the, the whole piece. So what you want is to create a core centre using core wool, which is a lot cheaper and it speeds up the process. What we've got here is this is core wool. It's it's sort of quite raggy looking. Um, it's in sort of in bits, but it's absolutely perfect for the centre of your projects. So what you do is um, you take your core wool, a piece depending on how big you want your pumpkin, and then you just roll it together and just lightly stab it a few times just to hold it together and then you can actually turn and you can see it's starting to hold and you're not creating a shape just a very loose round shape for the pumpkin that's all you're going to need i just quickly do a few more steps if you are doing a really big piece if you're doing something like um, the large pumpkin here then what you could do, and what I have actually done with with that particular pumpkin, is you can get a piece of string, tie it round, parcel style, tie it tightly, and then pull it round, and tie it the other way and then you've got a nice firm tied piece of core wool there ready for you to start wrapping your batting around but I'll just take that off because we don't really need that for this because it's just not big enough so there you go and it's a little bit shapeless but that's okay because our sheets are going to create the batting we're going to wrap them around like a a little blanket. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Now these, um, this is a two-tone batting I've got, so it's uh, um, batting's made up in, in, in different layers and, and quite thick sheets. So as you can see, that's your sheet there that's going to go over. Um, but if you haven't, uh, if you just want to use one colour or you haven't got a two-tone batting, that's fine because you can just put layers of different coloured battings together so that it shows through. But I'm just going to go with this glorious pumpkin colour, full on pumpkin. Now I've put some packs together for you um, with these batting packs in. This length here that you can see is approximately 50 grams of batting. So you get quite a lot um, for 50 grams. I want to show you how you use it. It's quite economical because 
you're going to wrap it around the, the core. So your core wool is here. You're going to take your sheet. Just check that it's not doubled up. Um, if you want it thick, then leave it like that, but you can actually pull it apart, which we will do, so that you're getting more use out of that. And because this centre's white, you're actually going to see some of the white coming through, so it gives quite a nice contrast. So you're just roughly going to see you're just going to cover it with the, like a little blanket, so tear that off. It tears so easily. Decide which is going to be the bottom, which obviously is going to be the top to start with. And just fold your wool over. Take your needle and gently poke it in. Pull it over quite tightly because you want to create a nice shape for your pumpkin and all you're doing is pulling each area around and into the centre, don't worry about any creases, it doesn't matter mine have all got them all creases underneath so you can see that and we've got quite a lot of excess here so all you do is, it's so easy, you just pull that off because you don't want to waste it and then pull your batting round and then you can just shape with your hands and you are ready to go almost just tidy this up a bit just connecting that batting to the core underneath. But as you can see it's really squidgy whereas I would say when you're making your animals, uh, your animal sculptures, I'm going to say make sure it's firm, make sure your legs are not floppy. This is completely different because this is soft sculpture so you can see how soft that is because we want to create that nice pumpkin shape and we don't have to do anything other than um, felt lines of uh, roving or batting down the sides to do that. So just make sure it's just nicely attached and then you'll have something like that at the bottom. And don't worry if it looks a bit untidy, that will all disappear when it's finished and it's in full pumpkin mode. Okay, now we've got our basic shape ready we want to just find the centre. So just take your needle. I use this one too here. Okay, so that's that's your centre. Make like a donut now. So we're going to make our first line, and we're going to draw it with our needle or needles. I'm just going to use this one for for quickness, but using a single needle to draw a line, like when you're making the ears um, for your animals, is is absolutely fine. So you're just going to go from the centre and you're going to, so what you're creating is a dent, an indentation with your needle, straight up and down. Continue it around to the other side, so you just create, you're splitting it in half. I'm going all the way underneath, it's really rough and then finding the other side. So it's going a bit skew if don't worry. It will all be fine when you add your embellishments later on. So there you can see down there you have a line. You turn it round, repeat the same So your pumpkin is now in quarters. And can you see also how that white is coming through really nicely? 
it's almost like it's it's just showing through underneath so it's creating some um, light and dark shades which is really nice So there we go, we've got it in quarters. So we will be doing it in two eighths, but what I'm going to do now is take a length of roving or wool top, just a long thin piece, and pop that into the centre, push it through till it holds, as you can see. And then we're just going to draw that down the pumpkin where we made those initial indentations and it will be too short that's fine you're just going to add some more when we get a bit further into it and more roving just twizzle some lengths Pop it on there, pull it around quite tight so that can you see how you're making that that pumpkin shape? It's really nice. Get your needle. Just push it into the centre and then pull it round. You don't really have to felt too much around the sides, and then come to the bottom and felt that into the bottom. And can you see? how you're actually starting to create those nice indentations. It might seem a bit yellow to you, but a bit later on we can maybe add some um, really, really thin pieces of, of um, the orange wool again, just to cover it. But I quite, I quite like, the, um, I like the, the differences. I'm going to put a bit of orange over. We just need a little bit more there. So pull that round, so just attach that there. And then pull that round to the bottom centre. So you've now got a shape. Then we're going to do the same across the other way. So I shall let you carry on that process and come back to you when mine's done. Okay so we're back again and as you can see this is nicely into quarters now and what I've started to do is make some indentations with my needle down the side so that we can actually split this now into eighths. So you've got four sections and you just need to take that needle down the centre of each section and uh, create those nice shapes. I've got one here I haven't done. So I just go down with the needle. Again, you can do this with one needle, but obviously when you're sitting there for hours watching a video, as quick as possible. There you go. Don't worry if they're not even, it doesn't matter. And then you do exactly the same as you did with your other The um, mustard roving that I'm using here will be in the boxes um, with the batting as well because this is really nice to use for the leaf colours. Um, so that will all be included. I haven't put these boxes together yet by the way. So in the centre, really push it down. It's starting to get quite firm in the centre which is good because you want that nice, you want it to dip in pumpkin style. And then pull that round quite tightly and you see as you pull that how it creates a shape without you actually doing anything so all you really need to do is get the end Oops, keep missing it and pop it in and round the next one to the bottom centre so I felt that in quite, it's the ends that really need to be in firmly because you need to pull on them to create that indentation so that you end up with a nice shape. 
and I'll let you carry on and we'll come back and when we've got all eight done four, six, eight, yes I can count we'll carry on hi back again okay so you should have something now just forget the dark colors that resembles this kind of shape so you've got all your lines of wool eight sections and that really is a pumpkin so what I've done here is um, I've, just to give it a little bit of contrast where the yellow lines are you don't have to do this um, in the pack that I have you have this nice rust colored um, batting and you can actually just pop a little bit along the length of those yellow lines that you've created for some contrast and just to to tone it down entirely up to you and you can just use your needle just to to drag those along right so that's where we're at at the moment you can also go around underneath if you've got any bits that are kind of sticking out odd shapes just use your needle to go around and tidy them up but don't try and get everything symmetrical it's not going to happen um, well I suppose if you want to spend hours and hours on it you could but I, it just doesn't matter it's supposed to be a nice relaxing project and if you become too much of a perfectionist or perfectionist um, it takes all the fun out of it so there we go that's ready so what I've also included in the pack is this lovely oh I love this colour it's must it's, it's, I think it's called mustard and I use that for the leaves and the stems so I'll just give you a quick demo on how to do those really easy very simple get them nice and firm and for this we actually do use this this roving which I like because it just gives a really nice finish and you can just create lots of lovely shapes just before we do that, as you can see, that white showing through, and I really like that. I just think it looks really nice. But if you wanted to add even more contrast or tone the orange down, you can take little sections of your wool batting and just gently felt it on. And then you see you've got contrast going on, and then you can just rub those. Go in diagonally, because you want this top layer to look nice without needle marks and then you can just use your needle to go over them but you really are just putting really thin layers on if you want to again bring it to the section in the middle you can bring it around to the other side and then you don't even need to actually touch any of this with your needle so there you go so I'll just leave that on just shows a little bit of contrast what you can do um, there's also yellow in the pack so if you wanted some even lighter areas you could you could do the same exactly the same thing this yellow is gorgeous I think it's called catkin and you can get that in the roving and the batting there we go so Lots of nice contrast going on there. Really, really easy. Look at that shape. It's fabulous. Okay. Right. So I am going to show you quickly how to make a leaf and a stalk. Um, you can see I've got a rice pad here. I make these myself. And I love them. I use them all the time. Um, foam um, I use as well. So that's just as good. And I'll probably swap between the two this time. So... In the pack that I've put together, which I shall show you at the end, just pull away a little section of rowing. We're just going to make a, a petal. Fold it in half, like so. And then just twizzle the end in the palm of your hand. So you've got that nice end that's actually started to mat together. You can do it in your fingers as well, in between your fingers. And you almost created your petal shape there, but now we need to felt it. 
So if you're using the foam, one needle is absolutely fine. Just start to felt round really roughly and use your needle to bring in the sides. I'm going to speed this up because I don't want to bore you with my tour de force which is my punch tool. It has seven needles and it's super fast felting. Works really, really well when you want to do flat pieces, petals, ears, I think I've mentioned it before. Just don't over felt on there and then just pull it off gently and you can see, turn it over and do it again. And as you can see, I'm not really bothered about the shape at the moment. It's, I mean, the shape's almost there because of how you folded it to start with. But, and, there. and if you want to do that on your phone, just carry on. Uh, on your phone as well, what you'll find is, um, I, I quite often use these, which are really good. I've got another one here. and lots of everything. It's silly, really. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So you can you can use these, um, and these do work really well on the foam. Punch tool it tends to bounce a little bit, but you can still use it. It's okay. It works really well. And then what I like to do is, either on the mat or the foam, just one side, I'm just going to fold over the side because I want to shape it. See how these petals are nicely shaped? So that's what we kind of want to aim for. So I want to shape, just pull that side in, use your needle, and then what you can do is push along the edge. Watch your fingers, please watch your fingers when you do this. This is the time when you are most likely to stab yourself. And you've got this little twizzle at the end. You can roll that over. Don't worry about this. Keep this quite loose at this end because we're going to fold that over and that's going to give us that really nice leaf shape, that cup area in the middle. So it's quite rough, you know, there's nothing particularly interesting going on there at the moment. So I'm just going to speed it up again. Just keep this end a little bit loose. Turn it over. So that ends a little bit flat. So I'm just going to pull it and I'm going to twizzle it in between my fingers and you've just reshaped it again immediately. So looking at this, I think we'll just have that in there so we'll just go in a little bit more. And we've got a nice arch here and then when we fold that, et voila we have a leaf. So that's going to be great. For the stem, this, lay a piece of the roving or the wool top, whichever you call it, fold over it, just a thin area, a thin piece, roll over the ends, double pressures over this, just felt it gently down. Foam pad, exactly the same. You feel like you're felting actually when you hear that noise. I quite like that noise. Okay. We actually make legs exactly the same way as this, but I'm going to do that in another tutorial for you. Just really roughly. Felt that. And then on my um, stalks, uh, they're slightly thicker at the bottom and it's so easy to create that extra layer of thickness. All you do, to pull it off, is fold over one end. So you just fold it over so that now when you felt again, 
that end is going to be thicker. Very, very rough this. Because we're going to roll it in our hands and that's what's going to um, create a nice firm area for you to attach it to. So there we go. So I'm just going to roll it. Again, you can do this on your mat. Foam's just as good. I'm going to roll it and I'm just going to quickly hold that together. Remember, this end that you folded over is going to be the end that's going to attach to the centre of your pumpkin. So it looks really rough at the moment, but that's all right, because we're just going to get it in our hands, we're going to lay it down, and we're going to roll it really, really fast. Your hands should get really hot. Mine are getting very warm now. Okay, so there we go. It's still looking a bit, a bit shapeless. So we then, again, this is the bit where you need to watch your fingers. Just pull in those untidy ends. Don't worry too much about the, the base because um, it's going to get stuck into the centre of the pumpkin. You're not going to see it. But you're just creating a nice sort of flattish area. Don't need to do any more than that. You want these loose ends tidying up at the top of the stalk. and then roll again and again firm it up even more you could do it a little bit more if you want but I'm not going to obviously because I want to get this done on the video so you take your pumpkin pop that in the centre thick end down in the middle and just felt through just till it's holding quite firmly. I like to put them at an angle. Just go around the other side if you want. Just go underneath. But it's all nicely tucked away so you won't see it. So there we go. And then I did make a leaf earlier. I've got one there and one there. So take the leaf and you see where this loose bit is? Just fold it over at the bottom. Lay it on its side, and where you folded it, just gently felt so that it holds like that. Then, all you need to do is push that into the stem. Into the centre where the stem is, and that's pretty much attached already. And that looks lovely, I really like that. I love this colour, mustard, in case you forgot. So we've got a great, gorgeous looking leaf there. You've got your stem, you've got some nice contrast. And then if you wanted to, um, for just for extra embellishment, you can add some, if you've got curly locks, anything like that knocking, uh, hanging about, you can just then let's get something a bit greeny or yellow. No, we'll go yellow. We'll go yellow. And then you can just pop those on there. Doesn't need them, but it's just extra. If you like extra embellishment, then as I've done with these. And they do look rather nice. And you can stick with a, the colour scheme, or if you wanted to add even more contrast, you could pop some green on there as well. But entirely up to you. And that's it. How to make a needle felted pumpkin out of 
gorgeous wool batting 